Hey everybody, David and David here from payitforward.com and upphone.com. And in this video, we're going to explain how to identify toxic apps or widgets on your iPhone. Yep, you probably know how to identify the toxic people in your life. <laughs> They're a drain. You don't want to be around them. Right, you they, make, they make you hot because you get so angry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So those people you cut out of your life, apps can be toxic too for your iPhone. Some of the symptoms you might be looking for are your iPhone's getting really hot. Exactly. The battery's draining faster than normal. Mm -hmm. Or there's a third thing. A crash. Crash. Your apps are crashing. Your phone right. is crashing. Having software. You're going right back to the home screen. Maybe, so you're using maybe, an app. Yeah, maybe your screen is freezing over and over. Yep. Uh, those are all symptoms. Maybe you have a toxic app or widget. Let's actually show them how to identify them. All right. Let's go to the settings app and then scroll down to privacy and then scroll down to analytics and improvements and tap on analytics data. You don't have to understand everything that's in this list to make sense of it and to figure out what apps or services or widgets are causing a problem on your phone or are toxic. So I'm just gonna scroll through. And what I noticed was this CalAccess D, which D is Daemon. It's a, something that runs in the background whenever you see the little D at the end. CPU resource. So if you see anything that says CPU resource, if I tap on that, Apple sets limits for developers about how much an uh, app can use the phone's CPU or how much it can do in the background. And if the phone tries to do more than it's allowed to do, it shuts right down and then it gets logged in here. So in this case, my calendar app used too much CPU and exceeded the limit of 50% CPU over 180 seconds. It means that there's something wrong with the calendar app itself or with the account. So what you can do in my case is just tap back, back, back to settings, scroll down to passwords and accounts, and just make sure that the calendars that you have turned on in this list are calendars that you actually want to have on. If you don't need a specific calendar to be on, just tap on that account and then turn off the switch next to calendar. I actually found a problem with my analytics data too. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll just open up the analytics here, settings, privacy, analytics and improvements, then analytics data. I noticed that the ESPN widget was showing up in my analytics log. Hmm. And last week, this was actually showing up multiple, like here it's just once. Mm -hmm. It was like a ton last week. And I, it was funny because I was having issues with the widget. Mm -hmm. And then I came to analytics data. I'm like, hey, maybe there's actually a problem here. Yep. Uh, so you might want to, if you see a widget or an app that's in here over and over and over again, you might want to just remove that widget or app or find an alternative if it's an app and you find right. a better option in the app store. That's cool because you sort of knew that there was something wrong with this right. app, right? Because why? I was tapping, wouldn't load, uh, stuff wasn't updating. I thought it was because your teams were losing. Well, the, yeah, my only team is, is done for the season because yeah. the Astros cheated. But anyway, so if you see something in here, the widget, I'm gonna remove this widget now because I don't really even use it that much. Mm -hmm. um, well, baseball season's over. Who baseball it? season's over. Uh, yeah, so okay. I'm just gonna go back to the home screen here by swiping up from the bottom of the screen and then swipe left to right to access your widgets. Here you can see ESPN widget, tap edit down there and tap the red minus, tap remove. Now it's gone. Uh, to delete an app, pretty simple. I actually updated the most recent version of iOS uh, so my uh, interface might look a little bit different than yours because there's some new stuff when it comes to deleting apps. So I'll just delete the ESPN app, for example, press and hold. And as you can see, there's this new delete app option, which is pretty cool. You said wow. tap the X and then tap delete. Much easier now than it used to be. Yeah. You can still press and hold and just keep holding forever and right. then they all start to wiggle and then you can tap the X, but this is a lot faster. It's a lot faster to do it this way. So another way to identify toxic apps specifically, not widgets, mm -hmm. is to go to settings battery and see if there's anything unusual with your battery usage. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm gonna open the settings app. I'm still in analytics data, so I'll tap back, back, settings, and I'll tap battery. And here you can see last 24 hours of usage last 10 days of usage. If it's been a longer term problem, mm -hmm. you might want to tap last 10 days as opposed to last 24 hours. If it's a new problem, last 24 hours. And what should we be looking for here? Any app that seems to be taking up a disproportionately high amount of battery. Right. Let's scroll down here. Yeah, I don't really have anything that's too out of the, too no, crazy no, here. It's pretty normal to me. Yeah, recently deleted apps as ESPN because mm -hmm. I just deleted the ESPN app in this video. Yep, good um, call. Good one call. thing I noticed here is that I saw that this uh, Tuesday a lot of background stuff going on. Right. But that's because I was connected to music two hours and 18 minutes in the background. I was actually driving down here in right. the snow. The lot of drive was a little bit longer than usual because I was stuck behind someone who did not belong on the road on when the there's road. a little bit of snow. Yep, and then you almost got hit by a tractor. Yeah, okay, yeah, and then a truck behind me was 
illegally passing people. Didn't realize how slow we were going and almost hit me. So that yeah. was good. David Lynch risking life and limb to make these YouTube videos. Yeah, so give it a thumbs up just for that reason I alone. I gave it a thumbs up even without this button. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So if you see an app here that's you know using a disproportionate amount of uh, battery, as you said, delete the app, find an alternative, or just try to delete the app and reinstall it. Sometimes mm -hmm. when you do a fresh install, mm -hmm. that can fix minor problems. Another thing to look for is an iOS update. If you're running out of date software, that can cause problems on your iPhone. So I'll go back to settings, tap general, tap software update, checking for update. I'm up to date. I actually updated it on Monday, I believe. Uh, I highly recommend this update. Mm -hmm. I love the new delete app thing. It's great. Yeah, that's great. It's great. Another thing you can try is to reset all settings. Maybe an app setting got fiddled with the wrong way and now it's causing problems in your iPhone. Before doing a reset all settings, just know that you have to re-enter your Wi-Fi passwords, reconnect your Bluetooth devices. If you watch our seven iPhone settings to turn off video, you'll have to go back and do that all over again. Uh, so it's a little bit of a you know, hassle to do this, but if it fixes the problem on your iPhone, it's worth it. Yeah, definitely kind of a magic bullet, this reset all settings. Doesn't fix every single problem. If you go to the Apple store with a problem, a lot of times people would come in and some of the techs would just reset all settings and send them on their way. <laughs> and then two days later, they'd come back and they were pissed. Yeah because it was a deeper issue. But yep. if you're at home, try the reset all settings before you try our next step. Yep. So before we do that, let's do the reset all settings real quick. Oh. Let's go back to general. Yeah. Uh, scroll down to reset. Yeah. Tap reset all settings. Tap reset again. Mm -hmm. iPhone will turn off, reset, turn back on. If the problem persists after the reset all settings, then we can do the DFU restore. DFU stands for device firmware update. I say this on like every video, but yep. it's the deepest type of restore you can do on an iPhone. If you go to the Apple store with a software problem, they are not gonna give you a new phone. They're gonna say, it's a software problem and we're gonna DFU restore your phone. And then if you say, well, no, I already did all this stuff. And they're gonna say, well, you have to set it up from scratch, but they are not gonna give you a new phone for a software issue like this. Yep, so if you don't know how to do a DFU restore, we have a video, card above, description section below. Mm -hmm. If the problem keeps persisting after a DFU restore, maybe there's a hardware issue, but. Yeah, it's very, very rare. Very rare. Like if it's a problem with the camera app, if you think your camera app is toxic because the camera doesn't work, it could be a hardware problem right. with the camera. Most of the time though, it's soft. 99% of the time it's soft. Yeah, if it's an ESPN app, that's not gonna be a hardware problem. But if right. it does involve the hardware, I suppose it could be. Absolutely. Yep. So that is how to identify toxic apps or widgets right. on your iPhone. Thank you guys for watching this video. Leave us a comment down below with any other questions. Give this video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed and don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more great iPhone videos.